If we get to higher energy than ultraviolet light, then we get to X-rays and gamma rays, which are the highest energy electromagnetic waves that exist. Remember that beyond a certain threshold, all electromagnetic waves count as gamma rays. So gamma rays are the highest type of electromagnetic wave. What we have here, though, is an image taken with X-rays. So X-rays are produced by accelerating electrons to high speeds inside a cathode ray tube or an X-ray tube, causing them to change their energy very quickly, which will release a lot of X-ray radiation. And we can detect them by photographic film, just like infrared, visible, or ultraviolet light. And because they have so much energy, they can in fact pass through soft objects, like flesh or blood. And so this means that we can use them to take photographs or x-ray graphs, I suppose, of bones. We can see from this picture over here that the x-rays pass straight through the flesh on the hands, but they get blocked by the bones. So the bones appear opaque, the x-rays can't pass through them, whereas the flesh is much more transparent to x-rays. We can see too that for the computer that this fellow is typing on, the plastic is completely transparent to x-rays, but the metal circuitry inside is not. It blocks the x-rays and so it appears dark in this picture. All right, well, once we get higher energy than x-rays, there's only one kind of electromagnetic wave left. And that, of course, is gamma rays. So there are no types of electromagnetic wave that have more energy than gamma rays. We just have higher and higher energies of gamma rays. These are, of course, produced in nuclear reactions. If we're nuclear physicists, then we'll call the process of releasing these gamma rays, gamma radiation. There are a few other types of nuclear radiation, those being alpha radiation and beta radiation, but they don't have much to do with electromagnetic waves, so we won't be covering them just yet. We can detect gamma rays both with photographic film, the same way as we would do for x-rays, or we can use Geiger counters, which are special meters that can measure the amount of radiation in the local environment. Geiger counters, of course, can also be used to measure the other sorts of radiation, alpha radiation and beta radiation. Which wave is the odd one out? Is it the microwaves, the x-rays, the infrared light, or the radio waves? So, odd one out, what could this possibly mean? Well, it means that one of these electromagnetic waves has properties that are quite different to the rest of them. Three of them are quite similar in terms of the amount of energy they carry and what they are used for, whereas the last one is quite different. And of course our answer is going to be X-rays, B. The reason for this is because they have much, much higher energy than any of the others, infrared light, microwaves or radio waves, and because they are used for a different purpose. Radio waves, microwaves and infrared light are used for communication whether it's communication between machines, as in infrared light, or communication between people, as in radio waves and microwaves. X-rays, on the other hand, far too energetic and far too readily absorbed by air to be able to use for communication. So this means that X-rays are quite different to the other sorts. Of course, they are all electromagnetic waves, so they're all produced by changing electric and magnetic fields. But in terms of what we use them for, and how much energy they carry, X-rays are definitely different to the others. Name at least three ways by which electromagnetic waves may be detected. So we've just had a whole section on detecting these waves, right? We should be able to name at least three. And in fact, I can name four for you. The first one is by antennae. Radios, whether it's a handheld radio or a car or something like that, use metal antennae in order to detect radio waves coming in. The radio waves cause the electrons in the antennae to vibrate. Those vibrations set up an oscillation in an, elect in an electrical circuit, and that oscillation can then be turned into sound waves. What's a different sort of detection method? Well, you might be thinking of photographic film. We can use photographic film in order to detect infrared light, visible light, ultraviolet light, X-rays, and gamma rays. In short, anything with at least as much energy 
as infrared light can be detected with specially treated photographic film. All right, so those are the two main ones. Let's get on to the more exotic forms of detection, shall we? First one that's a bit closer to home, but only works for a very narrow band of wavelengths. And that is, of course, the eye. Visible light can be detected by the eye, but none of these other sorts can. So it's very useful for detecting waves, but it only detects a very small number of them, or a very small range of frequencies. Our last one will also detect a rather small range of frequencies, but only for very, very high energy waves. Gamma rays. Can you remember what that one is? It's the Geiger counter, which can be used for measuring nuclear radiation, whether that's alpha radiation, beta radiation, or gamma radiation. 